flooding in Europe to wildfires in the US. Greece, like so much of Europe, is grappling with extreme weather. And as this part of the Mediterranean burns, Southern Europe's worst heat wave for more than 30 years has fueled fires across parts of Spain, Italy, Greece and Turkey for three days now. In less than a week, more than 100 forest fires have broken out across the country. On the island of Evia, by ancient Olympia, people are fleeing. <laughs> Wildfires have closed in on these shores, and residents and tourists are being crowded onto ferries and fishing boats. <laughs> Leaving behind the burning island. Greece, like many parts of Europe, has been grappling with extreme weather this summer, widespread flooding and colder than average temperatures in Central Europe. In Belgium, heavy rainfall has caused severe flooding less than a fortnight after deadly flash floods across Western Europe. A typhoon is battering China days after severe flooding killed dozens of people. Scientists say these events are becoming more common because warmer temperatures mean the air holds more moisture, which leads to more extreme... A record heat wave is fueling devastating wildfires across much of the southern Mediterranean and eastern Europe tonight. Hundreds of blazes have broken out, many of them multiplying in recent days. Italy, Croatia, Greece, Bulgaria, North Macedonia and Ukraine are tackling dozens of wildfires. Extreme temperatures and dry conditions are fueling wildfires in Northern California. Fire is threatening Spain too. This is the Catalonia region and one of the worst fires here in years. There were similar scenes on the Italian island of Sardinia, an out of control fire after a heat wave. While no single event can be attributed to climate change, to be stuck on a beach, surrounded by fire on all sides. It was a waking nightmare from which the sea was the only salvation. They are fleeing from nature at its most ferocious. Wildfires on the Greek island of Evia forced tourists and residents to be rescued by boat from the beaches. Even the outskirts of Athens weren't safe. With thousands leaving their homes to outrun the fast-moving flames. Just 30 kilometers from Athens. Firefighters have been struggling to get this latest blaze near the Greek capital under control. Just hours earlier, flames came close to the site of the ancient Olympics as this oldest of countries grapples with this very modern peril. The birthplace of the Olympics, where the Games were first held in 776 BC. In Italy, firefighters have been working day and night to douse the flames. On the island of Sicily, the fires in the mountains are also threatening seaside resorts. This year's fire season has been one of the most destructive on record, according to EU data. The extraordinary summer is testing the region's response to increasingly extreme conditions. There was flooding in London too. Water streamed into a train station and turned roads into rivers as representatives from more than 50 countries met to lay the groundwork for November's big climate summit in Glasgow. Heavy rain has led to widespread flooding in North Korea, where state TV reports that thousands of people have been evacuated from their homes. Large areas of farmland are underwater, and more than a thousand homes in the country's east coastal region of Hon Chi Yong have been destroyed. Officials in India say more than 160 people have died in the past week due to severe floods and major landslides. Many people have also been reported missing in villages along the country's western. 
Turkey's also wading in as a major disaster area is declared after weeks of flooding and landslides in its northeastern coastal region. Isha. Just the damaged furniture, shops and cars amount to millions. Thousands of people have been forced to leave their homes in southern Turkey as huge wildfires continue to burn. Fires blazing on the hillsides and forests near the coastal resorts of Bodrum and Marmaris. Wildfires have been raging for seven days now in Turkey, and these flames are closing in on the Yenikoy power station. Strong winds, low humidity and scorching temperatures, the weather conditions that help the fire spread. In Turkey, a wall of fire surged toward a huge power plant on the Aegean coast. Thousands of residents fled. By land. Wildfires are destroying huge swaths of territory around Europe. Finland has been battling its biggest forest fire in half a century. Heat waves are also causing havoc further south. The worst blazes are raging in southern Turkey where six people have been killed. So there is a very complex process behind all this. In the meantime, the impact of fires, floods, extreme heat and drought will continue to be felt. With less than 100 days until the Glasgow summit, these events may just focus minds. Greece's Prime Minister says the country is experiencing what he calls a nightmarish summer as a record-breaking heatwave fans. With temperatures above 100 degrees, more than 100 fires have burned through parts of the country over the last week, forcing evacuations. And... More than 150 wildfires are burning right across the country, some close to the northern suburbs of Athens. The people of this ancient city are dealing with an historic heat wave, Greece's worst for more than 30 years, caused by what meteorologists have called a heat dome. In Greece's Evia Island, in the grip of its own heat wave, more flames tear through a pine forest. The rolling hills and little visibility hampering rescue efforts is no surprise over 150 houses a second. But it is in the suburbs of Athens, where fires are burning most intensely. Amid the smoke, we filmed explosions in a village on the outskirts of Athens. Large swathes of forest completely destroyed. Uh, strike me as very almost precisely the same as the wildfires of 2019 slash 2020 in Australia uh, and of course the way that the wildfires have emerged in the US and uh, North America as well. Uh, so certainly not a coincidence and uh, something that we know for sure uh, is being made more intense. Well, there is no doubt about it. We are now in the midst of the worst drought we have seen in modern-day California. Today, experts gathered to lay out where things stand. To the wildfire crisis in the West, that Dixie fire engulfing an area larger than the size of Los Angeles. Flames are raging through California right now. This is what it looked like Thursday night on the road to Canyon Dam in the mountains of Northern California. Everything, trees, cars, homes, and more homes in flames. Wildfire emergency, California's Dixie Fire exploding again overnight. Now the third largest. It took just an hour for these buildings to be incinerated, all from a fire that's now burned for more than three weeks, starting small near the town of Paradise. And then growing exponentially this week, it exploded, now becoming the third largest wildfire in California history. Of the state's seven biggest fires ever, six have occurred in the last year. We're seeing truly frightening fire behavior. We really are in uncharted territory around some of these extreme large fires. I have never seen a firestorm this bad. The Dixie Fire in Northern California turning skies red in Lassen County and Susanville. This after the fire demolished the town of Greenville. We're talking about two towns erased from the map in 24 hours. But he says California's wildfires are creating never-before-seen challenges. Have they become more dangerous? Well, over the past three years, I think we've all seen it, right? It's just they're getting hotter and faster, and I think the fire flew from that side of town through the town in maybe about an hour, maybe a little less. The historic fire season in the West, driven by a mega drought that's beginning to affect infrastructure. Lake Oroville is now at less than 25% capacity. 
officials were forced to shut down the Hyatt hydroelectric power plant there for the first time ever due to the lack of water. Another mountain community is a faint flames. Look at this, swallowed up the homes and the trees. In the meantime, here are pictures from outside of the destroyed gold rush town. This is Greenville. Smoke filled the sky with embers and flames rising on both sides of the road. The fire moved southward Thursday, taking out additional structures along a major highway. And to the west, buildings in the town of Canyon Dam were also seen in flames. And not at all an exaggeration to say things here are dire. We've got some visuals for you. We'll start at Oroville Dam. Now at 34% of average, that's dangerously close to the point where it won't be able to generate any electricity. In Marin, the reservoir levels have reached historic lows, with water managers saying they need to cut use by 40% district-wide. Statewide, firefighters say they're concerned with nine active wildfires as of today, and the heart of the fire season still ahead of us, that dry conditions could mean bigger burns. Um, give you some comparison and where we were last year at this time to where we are now. Uh, we do have an increase uh, of the number of incidents across all jurisdictions, about 12%. Uh, about 12%. Uh, we're up to 6,049 incidents uh, statewide, as opposed to last year at this time, we were at about 5,400 um, uh, incidents. to share which will be at the top of the comment section I can't really say too much about it because of censorship but what I can say is it analyzes the blood after you know what and it does show some interesting scientific findings and some illuminating information this is do something that's gonna creep you the fuck out do something that's gonna creep you the fuck out you can do, Chloe? Of course. I'm the first personal assistant built by CyberLife. I take care of most everyday tasks like cooking, housework, or managing your appointments, for example. Mm. And I understand you're the first android to have passed the Turing test. Could you tell us a little more about that? I really didn't do much, you know. I just spoke with a few humans to see if they could tell the difference between me and a real person. It was a really interesting experience. But this is the first time in history that man has created a machine more intelligent than himself. I gather your brain can perform several billion billion operations per second, is that right? Absolutely, but I only exist thanks to the intelligence of the humans who designed me. <laughs> they have something I could never have. Really? And what's that? A soul. And we have to knock on those doors and we have to get in those communities, and we have to knock on those doors, and we have to get in those communities, and we have to knock on those doors, and we have to convince people, and put them in a car, and drive them, and get that vaccine in their arms. Put them in a car, and drive them, and get that vaccine in their arms. Put them in a car, and drive them, and get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission and get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. And get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. That is the mission. And get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. And get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. And get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. And get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. And get that vaccine in their arms. That is the mission. I'm gonna go ahead and make another video, and this video is about how 
they got y'all thinking that the military is really fighting for your freedom, and that's real, and that's far from the truth. The military ain't nothing but us going to go fight other motherfuckers. That's also us. So they're basically paying civilians to kill other civilians or kill in other innocent people that ain't got shit to do with nothing. Because all these motherfucking problems that the world has is government related. Civilians can't do shit with that the world has is government related. All these motherfucking problems that the world has is government related. All these motherfucking problems that the world has is government related. Civilians can't do shit. We don't have no say so and shit. So for them to uh, be putting on this illusion like they're really fighting for your freedom, no, that, that's a motherfucking lie. That's just some shit that these motherfuckers is telling motherfuckers when they the motherfuckers that's really enslaving us. Motherfucking lie. That's just some shit that these motherfuckers is telling motherfuckers when they the motherfuckers that's really enslaving us. Motherfucking lie. That's just some shit that these motherfuckers is telling motherfuckers when they the motherfuckers that's really enslaving us. Okay? Because ain't no civilians in no other countries got no military gear or no no weapons of mass destruction that's, that they can use to try to come over here and help uh, hurt us over here. Let's think about that for a second. Who who is who is we really fighting for our freedom for? We fight so our government is fighting a, a whole nother government. Motherfuckers say something about one world government. I feel like it's always been one world government. Motherfuckers say something about one world government. I feel like it's always been one world government. Government. Motherfuckers say something about one world government. I feel like it's always been one world government. These motherfuckers just been controlling the whole motherfucking world. And these motherfuckers is paying us civilians to kill each other. That's all That's all that shit is. And then they want to put this shit on the news saying they fight for our freedom, doing all this shit. Well, no. Hell no. Hell no. So anybody in the military, y'all, y'all got to reconsider what y'all doing. So anybody in the military, y'all, y'all got to reconsider what y'all doing. So anybody in the military, y'all, y'all got to reconsider what y'all doing. Feel you feel me? I know the pay is good, but come on, man. Look, y'all already know that that ain't nothing that's righteous, man. That's that's not righteous at all. And then we're gonna get into digital currency, and then the military on the street. So it's a lot of stuff going on. Thank you for tuning in. First, we're gonna get to them talking about the IMF, talking about the transition into the digital world currency, about the IMF. Talking about the transition into the digital world currency, preparing ourselves. And so here's the video clip right here. It accelerates its use and adoption of digital currencies. I caught up with the IMF Managing Director, Kristalina Giogeva, and started by asking her view on what's taking place around the world today. This is a revolution in terms of opportunities to serve you, the consumers, with technology that makes uh, payments instantaneous, cheaper for everyone. Okay, cheaper than everyone sounds good. No, but it's not good. Okay, but again, we're going to go into what the highlighted plan is. Monetary system. Florida is about to roll out the digital ID. To the monetary system florida is about to roll out the digital id and you know how france is florida is piloting biometric digital driving license so they'll have the you know checkpoint you know cops oh, let me see your phone and scan it it's a qr code and so going into it it says having for years fed uh you know residents of buffett of anti-tech anti-big brother anti-government paranoia Florida state local politicians pushing a mobile driving license might want to test the vulnerabilities of their safe rooms. Done on the military, literally landing on bridges, landing on not not bridges, but landing on highways. And this is what they're doing now. They blocked off all the streets for them to be able to do these landing drills and probably what event do you believe would be about to happen if the military has to land on the street? Let's let's read more information on this. A-10 tankers land on U.S. road for first time ever in practice drill. I want to hear in the comment section what y'all think this is about because in the event of an emergency, obviously landing on the bridge out of nowhere, 
part you have to go back and watch the beginning, which was the biggest part of this stream. Uh, China threatens U.S. over Taiwan arms sale war games, hunting rifles ready against the wolves. Seven According to the military, the alarm sounded shortly before 11 a.m. in Ein Quinie, Neva Ativ and Snur, near Israel's northern border with Lebanon and Syria. The Iran-backed Hezbollah terror group confirmed it had fired the projectiles, which it said came in response to recent Israeli airstrikes in Lebanon. The Islamic resistance shelled open areas near the Sheba farms with dozens of 122mm rockets, Hezbollah said in a statement carried in Arabic language media. Thursday's early morning Israeli airstrikes were in response to a previous rocket attack from Lebanon on Wednesday. There were no immediate reports of casualties.